It's a selfish decision to have a home. Okay. Most people shouldn't buy a home. No one should buy a home. Homes were not built for people. Homes were built for banks. The bank created that product to sell money. You can't just loan people money. You need a product in between. Like when people start really understanding what I'm telling them, they're like, wait, what did he just say? The bank can't lend money for just money. Like you need a reason to borrow money. Oh, you're starting a business. That's a reason, but it's really risky for the bank. What if a bunch of bankers sitting around drinking bourbon? Do we, we need to lend more money. We got to lend money out, man. That's how we make money. We get people to give us a dollar. We lend it out nine times. So we lend it out nine times. We need something to lend the money on. So back in the 50s, they are like, everybody should have a home. Everybody should have a home, right? Oh man, that's pretty good. That's, we should call it something like the American dream. You can't just call it a house, right? Everyone should have one, right? They got the politicians behind it. Yes, everyone should have one. And then what they did was basically those homes were built for banks because who made all the money on the homes? Wasn't even the builder. Certainly wasn't the homeowner. It was always the banks. Hmm. Hmm. Colleges was another scheme by the bank. Okay. Everyone should have a proper education, but they don't have the money for it, but they should have it. And it, it, as they offered debt, as they, as they offered free loans to college students and families, those tuitions went up. Right. What, what I do is I accumulate cash. I don't let cash sit in the bank. This is what my mom did her entire life. She let that money my dad left sit in the bank. Maybe earned a little dividend stock. I take that money, I put it in real assets. I don't give it to New York. You know what most Wall Streeters, including me, put their money? Where? We don't put it in any financial instruments. Exactly. Or stocks or bonds. Bank of America will lend me money to buy real estate, but they won't lend me money to buy their own stock. That should be a good enough thing to get. <laughs> real, it's real. I can right. see it. It's a simple business. My real estate will be bigger than all my other businesses combined. It is the easiest, simplest business that I have. It is indestructible. That's the other reason. So twice a year, I'm gonna go broke. I accumulate cash. Once I get a certain amount, I start looking for a place for that money to go. It's gonna go into a real asset. Illiquid is good, not bad. Right. So I don't want liquidity. Okay. I don't want money. Illiquid is good because it's in an asset. It's, I don't want access to the money. You know, they say cash is king. Cash is garbage. So I get rid of the money. To make yourself earn more cash. I have to go back into the marketplace and say, who's got my money? Right. Money, money is not to be saved and hoarded. Like, like, it's no good if you don't use it. It's why people don't hoard gold anymore. You don't keep gold because you can't exchange it. Money is to be used. For those of you out there that are like complaining about the cost of anything, the truth is, that's what that money's for. The only thing, the only purpose money has is to be used. And, and I was scared that I couldn't produce more money. So every time I spent money, I complained about it. Today, I'm like, that's the biggest mistake I ever made. Should have been spending more money. Uh, it wouldn't have take, taken me 30 years. In the first five years, I should have borrowed money I didn't have, and I should have spent money that I did have, and I should have gone into debt to do it, to get my brand out there, to get it known. The mattress guy in your town did it. The car guy in your town did it. Whoever spent the most money, whoever, whoever put it all out there all the time, every day on every TV, radio, and the internet, wins the battle. Poor people are, are extremely selfish people. And the concept here is you're thinking about yourself all the time. What you don't have, what you need, your clothing, your shelter, your excuses, your problems. And I say that with no sympathy because sympathy's not gonna, it's not gonna feed you. Okay, the, the poor people and people, by the way, that just get by are poor. So really the thing we need to, we need to define here is what is poor, right? Yeah, what almost is everyone, almost everyone, everyone living below your potential, you're probably poor. You're not, you're not rich, you're not prosperous, you're poor, which is the middle class of the planet. I'm not talking about poverty. You know, that guy, that guy's not poor. That guy is, he's, 
Like, he's out of choices. He's got to beg. The poor, the middle class, the described poor, the middle class, nice name to keep everybody civil. Like, let's give them homes, let's give them cars, let's indebt them, give them a good job, give them a good office, you know, big watches, and, and, and we got slaves. But they feel good about it because they're better off than some, you know, starving kid in Ethiopia. So that's why I say, man, that, look, the middle class is a, a group of selfish, self-absorbed, think about themselves. I'm not going to be a salesman. I'm better than that. You know, I'm a banker, dude. I'm the vice president without a job. I'm not going backwards. I'm not going to use Facebook and Instagram. I'm not going to do that to get known. I'm not going to go to that meeting. I'm not going to drive there. I got... Kids. This is a mother. Uh, uh, I got two kids you don't understand. Uh, I'm English. That works in America. All this is selfish. You know, it's just selfish. Right? So, so when I saw that, I'm an observation person. Like, like I see things. I, I, my eyes are wide open. And so when I see that, I'm like, well, that's dumb. When I see me over the years say, I'm not, dude, I don't have time for Facebook, man. I, I say, oh, wait, wait. That, that Facebook thing might be that gift. I was asking for something to scale. How can I scale the planet? Facebook comes along, the first thing I say is, that's stupid. And I heard that. Okay, every time I've ever said something was dumb or stupid, meant I didn't understand it. That's code for, I don't understand it, right? And, and, then, and then I wake up, it's like a caution light goes off in my mind, says, pay attention to that thing. And then I went and got a Facebook page. Hmm. I didn't hire somebody to give me a Facebook page. I didn't delegate it to somebody else. I went and built my own, learned how to use it, found out what was there, you know, played in that space for a little while, and then I heard about Twitter. So I'm off topic, but 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 the point is that these are gifts, man. They're being delivered to the planet right now. Every day they're being delivered. You know the old saying, the mind is like a parachute. It won't work if it's open. But I want you to add one piece to that. If that parachute is wide open, you're falling straight to the ground. You understand what I'm saying? If it doesn't open, if the mind doesn't open, you're in trouble. If it opens too wide, you're a dead man bouncing or a dead woman bouncing. My point to you is this, okay? Most people do actually have an open mind. The problem is many people, they have a mind that's wide open with no filters, no gates, no protection. You listen to everyone. You listen to everyone on Facebook, everyone on Instagram. You listen to your uncle, your aunt, your mom, your dad. When the
hands too open, you get too much data and you go into confusion. You gotta get up, you gotta get out. The amount of time you spend outside your proximity or location where you sleep gives you a better chance of being successful. So get up, get out. Go meet the world head on, folks, no matter how bad it is. Go meet whatever it is, okay? You gotta make up to somebody. You gotta apologize for something you've done. You gotta make up uh, the damage of, of years of neglect and, and maybe uh, betrayal. And look, I've done all that. I've had all those things where I screwed up over and over and over again. My reputation sucked. You can fix anything. I'm proof that you can fix anything. Anything can be fixed, but you gotta fix it. I always say this, pay the price today so you can pay any price in the future. Pay the price now, okay? Pay the price. Look, I've been ridiculed by my peers, by customers, and by competition. I've been judged for working too much, wanting too much, being too colorful, being inappropriate, insensitive, and too out there. I'm trying to figure it out. I've been threatened, I've been sued, I've been betrayed by friends, I've been ripped off, and I've been copied. 30 years, 30 years, 18 hour days. It's been 30 years. It's probably gonna be 30 years for you too. Doubt, uncertainty, insecurities, rejection, disappointment, judgment. It's gonna be 30 years of it. Are you, are you willing to pay the price? If anybody thinks you're gonna be successful without paying that price, you're wrong.